Victoria, are we going to my first injury? Your first. Okay. So my focus will be um, potential legislative changes. I think um, Brad's going to talk um, about what's possible today, which uh, isn't enough, frankly, which is why we need legislative changes, but there are some avenues to attract talent. Um, Jason, I think, will focus on his specific efforts around startup visas um, and uh, some of the work that we've been working on <coughs> with them. Um, I'm going to kind of give a map review of <coughs> immigration uh, politics and then get into a few potential policies. Um, immigration is uh, one of the most problematic national areas of politics. It's very difficult to have a discussion uh, about improving our competitiveness, uh, attracting the best, brightest, and hardest working from around the world to uh, deploy their talents here in our country. Uh, it gets conflated uh, with the issue of illegal immigration, obviously a very uh, legitimate issue. We have probably upwards of 12, 15 million people working here illegally. Uh, it gets conflated with a kind of uh, nativism and xenophobia. People are sometimes afraid of people from other countries changing our culture, whether it's legally or illeg illegally. Uh, and as a result, the politics are very, very difficult. What you have from both sides of the aisle, um, uh, from the Republican side, uh, there's a sizable part of the Republican base that has a very anti-immigrant sentiment. And so even in terms of increasing visas for startup visas or EB-5 or executive level visas, anything that increases the number, uh, there's a groundswell of action against because it means fundamentally more immigrants. Uh, likewise, from the Democratic side, sometimes it's hard to make progress on these issues because they want an all or nothing approach. There's many people who say, well, it's fine to allow more executives in, it's fine to allow more tech people in, but until you do something about the 12 million people that um, you know, help create some route of sensibility for them, we don't want to touch that high end. Um, so that's why it's problematic um, and difficult because uh, a, a complete comprehensive immigration solution, well, uh, for those who look, examine this issue, it's kind of obvious where we need to go. It's the same basic policy that President Bush and President Obama have espoused, uh, namely workplace verification system that's ungameable, that has a biometric ID, coupled with a way that people who are needed here and have been in the country can get uh, a working, a provisional working uh, permission. And they pay some kind of fine if they've been violating the law in the past. Um, but we need to fundamentally have uh, an immigration system that serves our country, that allows us to attract the best and brightest from around the world to deploy their talents here. Uh, what we have today is uh, quite the contrary. Uh, we actually are subsidizing the rest of the world by repelling and preventing people who want to create jobs in our country from doing so, uh, which makes no sense economically. Um, and while this country has done a better job on the free flow of capital, on trade, we recently ratified uh, free trade agreements with Colombia and South Korea and Panama, we've done an abysmal job uh, with a, we don't want to call it a free flow of labor, but let's say a moderated flow of labor. Um, a moderated flow of labor that serves the needs of our economy and our country, uh, and what we have now is completely contrary to that. We encourage law breaking, we encourage the presence of people here illegally, uh, we prevent people from starting companies here and creating jobs. So where does this stand legislatively? Again, um, it's in a bind, um, because it's difficult to get a conversation through with either party. As the Super Committee, uh, which is charged with reducing the deficit by trillions of dollars, began their deliberations. I um, talked to the members of the Super Committee and tried to encourage them to include immigration provisions uh, in this, because nearly every immigration provision that makes more sense of our system raises money and reduces our deficit. Either creates more taxpayers, creates money through fines. Uh, there's a variety of ways to do it. Uh, but what we're doing now costs taxpayers money every day. Uh, I've been several times to the uh, immigration detention facility in Aurora, again, uh, while well, about 40% of the people there are what we call criminal aliens and, are, are, and, and should be there and they need to be kicked out. The rest are people that were kind of in the wrong place at the wrong time, they didn't have their papers, and instead of being productive, we're now subsidizing them at the tune of, the tune of $120 a day taxpayer expense and they're spending three to six months there. So they go from the asset column to the liability column in our country um, because of the um, complete uh, incoherence of the current uh, legal system and unenforceability of the current system vis-a-vis -vis immigration. Um, I've authored a number of piecemeal bills. Again, I do support if we can get the whole thing done, that's great, but I don't think the perfect should be the enemy of the good. If we can do anything to create jobs, that's great. I have a, a bill to increase the number and create a special category of nurse visas 
uh, in areas of the country of nursing shortages. There's a lot of uh, high quality foreign trained nurses that can come here. We do need to beef up our own preparation programs, but that's uh, one area we can improve. Uh, and then EB-5, which are investor visas, is probably the area of immigration code that's most directly tied into jobs, because it actually requires that these foreign investors invest $500,000 in an American company and create five jobs for Americans. So it's, uh, I, I try to cast anybody who opposes this and say, look, you're opposing jobs for Americans because each of these would create five jobs. It's a program that exists today, but we're trying to streamline, facilitate, uh, increase the turn, improve the turnaround time, uh, make sure it's $500,000 rather than going through a bunch of paperwork to get it to $500,000 down from a million, and to create a startup category, which Jason will talk about, where it doesn't have to be your money. You don't have to be the investor yourself. You can be a foreign entrepreneur who raises capital from venture capitalists or friends and family, and you want to start your, 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 your company here. And there's examples of that every day, companies that we turn away. And of course, it's far more under EB-5 than the five jobs it creates, because yes, five jobs are nice, but some of those companies are going to succeed. And some of those companies that otherwise won't be based in this country could be employing a thousand people in five years or eight years. And uh, those should be jobs that we want in this country. So um, this country is extremely poorly served uh, by our current set of immigration laws. They are, uh, I don't know if there was a point in time in the past where they met our needs, but they don't meet the needs of today's America. Uh, they detract uh, from human capital and building human capital. There's really two ways to grow human capital, which is the great asset of our country, even more so than our natural resources. One is education, which is obviously very important, grow our own human capital. The other is immigration, import the best and brightest and hardest working from across the world to deploy their talents here, pay their taxes here, employ uh, Americans. And uh, our current system is extremely counterproductive. And uh, it is, of course, one of my greatest hopes that either this Congress or a future Congress will someday rise to that occasion. Uh, and, and, and try to create an immigration system that uh, serves the needs of the American economy and the American nation. Testing. All right, here we go.